All right, 2402 reproduction video five, and I'll finish up with what I should have finished up in the previous thing, but mammary glands then go on to uh, oogenesis. So, uh, finishing up female reproductive parts uh, important to mammals are these mammary glands that S should be green. Uh, mammary glands are the, where mammals get our name, right? And that's mammal. So, and we've uh, evolved a very interesting way to feed our newborns, and that is by feeding them highly modified protein and fat rich sweat that you secrete out of little tubes <laughs> into their mouth. It's kind of gross when you think about it. But, uh, and then what, what if we drink milk, if we drink cow milk, we're drinking modified sweat that a cow has to feed its babies, but we're drinking it like cow babies. Weird, right? So, in any case, within the breasts are lobules, which are little uh, parts of the overall gland, which produce the milk. And that milk is secreted through the nipples, which act kind of like a little target, right, for the baby. Uh, helps them zero in on the milk. Anyway, moving on to oogenesis. Again, uh, it's mitosis and meiosis, just like spermatogenesis. But now we're going to produce uh, an ova, or an ovum, I should say. And down here, you'll notice one thing. If you look at the finished product, there's three little runts here and then one big one. Females do the same division as males do, but they concentrate all the good stuff into one cell. So they end up making one really large, really expensive uh, egg cell that, that has a lot of the material that that little embryo is going to need to continue development. So here we go. Uh, Oogonia, those are the first cells, and this is in the follicle in an ovary. The oogonium is that stem cell which is doing mitosis, and this happens before you're born. Okay, so all this stuff happens before you're born. By the time you're born uh, and you're female, you have all of these things. You've, you may have heard females have all the eggs they'll ever produce um, by the time they're born. Technically false, because eggs are way down here. You have all of the primary oocytes you'll ever have by the time you're born. So you'll make millions of those. You end up keeping about 400,000, which is more than you'll ever need uh, to, <laughs> to produce. If you had 400,000 offspring, good luck. Anyway, so the oogonium undergoes mitosis, becoming what they call a primary oocyte. So primary oocyte, and then time out. 13 years later, or whatever, they kick back into action. So those primary oocytes... But at puberty, at the beginning of puberty, start to finish their meiotic divisions. So, or they, I guess they begin their meiotic divisions. So, uh, here we go. Uh, primary oocyte, uh, blah, blah, blah. They, they, uh, they go through meiosis one. Sorry, I'm losing my head here. And then they become secondary oocytes. And those secondary oocytes are haploid cells. And also you make that little polar body too, right? So there's meiosis one. And then that secondary oocyte is the thing that gets ovulated. So another misconception is that the ovary releases an egg. It releases a secondary oocyte. That secondary oocyte is the critter that makes its way uh, down the oviduct. And if it meets a sperm cell, so fertilization occurs, the, the sperm cell actually fertilizes, makes contact with a secondary oocyte. If that sperm cell makes contact with the secondary oocyte, that oocyte finishes meiosis two and becomes an ovum over here uh, with all of the good stuff kept in it. Females have an, uh, a quality over quantity uh, strategy rather than compared to males, which are uh, quantity over quality. So here, notice, this chart right here. Males make over the course of their lifetime over a trillion of these sperm cells. A trillion. A thousand times a thousand is a million. A million times a thousand is a billion. A billion times a thousand is a trillion. So way more than all the people on the planet times a lot. Females only make 500 eggs, right? Uh, because they are making a much larger investment uh, in lots of animals, mammals being the notable example here, uh, the female's taking most of the risks 
she has to carry the baby for a very long time. She has to provide all the nutrition for that baby even after it's born, you know, evolutionarily speaking anyway, in the form of milk. And uh, there's a greater than zero chance that you can die during childbirth, right? There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So females make a really large, valuable egg, and then they have to choose their uh, choice of mate is a bit more uh, uh, picky than, uh, than, than males. And this is a lot of... Uh, animals exhibit this where you have female ultimate choice any case I mean the male has to say okay yeah but you know all right the, the female get the final call uh, all right so here we go these follicles just kind of listed here primary follicles are the very smallest ones they hold primary oocytes secondary follicles get a little bit bigger but they're still primary oocytes inside and then as that follicle gets swollen and it starts to fill up with fluid it those primary oocytes are going to go through that process of meiosis one and become secondary oocytes. And then ovulation is where you actually release that secondary oocyte. That's it for that lecture. Only a couple more like a couple more videos.